video, I'm going to show you how to load some gene expression data and then create some bar plots and histograms to understand what is in the data set. So first of all, let's load the data. I'm going to call it df. And here I'm going to just use this function read table because it's a txt and I need to add the name of the txt and I have here some uh, sample data with 1000 genes has some NAs in it so just we have a real world uh, situation uh, to understand how the columns are organized they're separated by a tab so here I have to write set and use this uh, T uh, to show what it's separated by and then I'm just going to uh, include a header because the names of the samples are included here in the name and uh, also I know uh, sorry I don't need this here and also I know that my um, row names are going to be useful as well so I'm just going to say row names equals one so that means that the first row is actually the row names okay let's make some space here so now I'm going to uh, create some uh, variables so objects for example I will store the names under this variable names so I'll just say in row names uh, df those are going to be my names I'm also going to now uh, manipulate the data a little bit. So for example, I want to omit all of the NAs so it doesn't confuse any of the downstream things that I do. So I'm going to just change DF and here I can use a function called NA omit and uh, that will just reduce all of the NAs. Then I will also uh, make a matrix out of this. The problem with some of the visualization, especially uh, histograms and plots, uh, they do not work with uh, data frames. They need matrices. So I'm just going to make it into a matrix. Um, and the way to do it is to do as matrix in here, add DF. And I'm going to, uh, well, first of all, let's see what's inside. For example, can say plot well bar plot sorry or let, let's just do a box plot df to see what's inside I'll just click run right here and see if everything works okay so the code is successful the problem is that all my data here is down in the bottom and there's a lot of outliers so there's a lot of differences between these so I would rather work with log scale data Let's see how to do that. Actually, very simple. So I'm going to create a new object called df log, and add here log of df plus one. Now I'm doing plus one because uh, logarithm of zero is going to be infinity, and I will not be able to see what's in my data. So let's try now. What would that work like? What would that look like? All right, excellent. So now everything is working fine, except for I have these names down here that are definitely uh, cut off. I don't see all of them, so that's simple. Uh, I need to do last equals two. So last equals two will help me convert them to uh, vertical alignment. And uh, now I can see what's in my data. Now I'm not gonna really need this anymore, so I'm just gonna comment it out. Okay, now, what if I want to uh, make a histogram of two samples and compare their histograms? Um, let's take, for example, uh, one of the samples, so it's called sample one, and we'll call it df uh, log, and this is going to be, let's take the first sample. So if I want to do a histogram, so hist, histogram, of sample one that will look like this okay so looks really nice and here uh, maybe I can give it a color so for example I can do call equals red now if I do that it's going to be red uh, colored shaded red here inside uh, I have frequency and sample one uh, maybe um, I want to now do another sample. So let's do sample two. 
and we're going to say df log and here um, we can take sample two okay so histogram for sample two and i make want to make it blue so now i have two histograms one is red another one is blue now they're fairly similar uh, if i see all of my samples again i'll see that there's actually two distinct groups here so there's sample one and two they're very similar but what if i take one and one two three four five six so one versus six let's try that so what if i do this as six and compare their histograms all right so the histograms are now somewhat different right so here's a weird looking histogram this one is a little bit more normal. Neither one of them is actually normal, but let's try to combine them. Uh, combining them is actually very simple. Uh, I can just add here, uh, for example, uh, add equals T, and that will combine those two histograms together. So it's a very simple way of doing it. But when I do that, I don't really see one on top of the other because this one is blocking that one. Right, so it's not a very good way of doing it. Of course, I can switch them around, uh, right? And so do first this one and then that one. So for example, I can do this one first. And this one second. And maybe that's a little bit easier to see but again i don't achieve the desired effect so i have to think of something else so to do that we need to add some alpha so transparency to our colors let's create color one and that color one is going to be rgb and i'm going to just say zero zero one and then alpha 0 0.5 so that's going to be our color one Zero, zero, 001.5 zero, and color 2 is going to be RGB and here I'll do 100.5. Zero, zero, zero so now instead of using blue and red, let me use call 1 and call 2. And let's see what that looks like. All right, so now I can see them overlaying each other and maybe i could switch them back to being the way i had it before let's see if this looks better all right so there i have it probably not a good idea so i'm just going to undo this because it seems like my uh, first sample is bigger but uh, the problem is that these bins are created automatically and they're not very good. Uh, th there's not high level of definition. So I can actually add uh, some more detail to this by adding this option breaks and let's add 200. Okay, so breaks 200 and let's see what that looks like. Okay, so now I have a very high definition uh, histogram. The problem is that I have this very high peak in the very beginning. Uh, and so that means that I have a lot of low frequency values. And uh, a better way instead of a histogram to actually demonstrate what the two distributions look like is to use a density plot. So let's create a density plot. So the first thing we need to do is we need to make the density calculation. So here I will add a density for sample one and D2 will be density for sample two. Now I can plot them. So for example, I can plot D1 color equals red and let's see what that looks like. 
All right, so here is a nice density plot, right? I like the curve. Let's try it with D2 and let's do color blue. All right, so that's what the blue looks like. How do we actually combine the two together? Well, the way we do that is we combine them. Instead of plot, we'll just add a line to the previous plot. So here I can do lines and I already have D2, I'll do D1 and let's make this red. Um, and uh, that's it, this should work. Let's see what it looks like. All right, so there we go. There we have the two histograms together. Now it would be nicer to also add some uh, more detail. So for example, I can shade in the area within these curves. So the way to do that is to add a polygon and I can do D2 and use my color. Uh, so which one did I use here? Uh, let's see. So color one. Okay, so let's do color one. Um, that's, sorry, call one. And the other one, we will add, uh, maybe let's add border. Well, I don't think we actually need border. Let's try that. All right, so there it is. You see, I have the blue inside here. Uh, it does come with, so let's do uh, border equals blue. Let's see what that looks like. All right, nice blue color here. And then here we can add the same thing, but for D1. So D1, color two and this will be red. All right, so here we have some nice uh, density plots, easy to compare, easy to see how they compare to each other. Okay, so we've got a box plot, we have a histogram, and we have a density plot. That's it. All of this information is actually available on code.omicslogic.com. Uh, you will find here a number of courses that you can use. And this was a preview of a course in Introduction to Data Science in R on Data Visualization. Thank you and see you again.